We are living in a world where the boundaries between science fiction and reality are blurred. Artificial intelligence is no longer only synonymous with robots, but is a part of everyday life. From digital assistants to self-driving cars, AI has snuck its way into every sphere of human activity, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Artificial intelligence is an overall term that encompasses machine learning and deep learning, which you may have heard interchangeably. I'm new to this field and all the jargon, but I'll do my best to make it understandable. Let's dive into each and figure out what they mean with examples. The field of AI or artificial intelligence was founded in 1956 at Dartmouth College. They predicted that a machine as intelligent as a human would exist in no more than a generation. AI is based on the assumption that human thought and intelligence can be mechanized. The field had a slow start because the idea surpassed the technology available at the time. Although the general public was excited initially, it was soon seen as an overambitious idea. Computing power was very limited and so was the available data. However, there was a resurgence in AI in the 1990s when it was used for logistics, data mining and medical diagnosis. Increased computational power was also a huge help. We should think of AI as just a label given to a product or a software that uses machine learning or deep learning to complete a task. It is not a specific coding method or a network. Generally speaking, there are two types of AI, weak and strong AI. Weak AI or narrow AI is a system that is designed and trained to complete a specific task. The system doesn't have any self-awareness or genuine intelligence. Some examples are Apple's Siri, Google's Cortona, and Google Assistant. IBM's question-answering system, Watson, was one of the earlier visible and understandable examples of AI. It defeated the two greatest Jeopardy! champions by a significant margin. In 2010, weak AI trading algorithms led to a flash crash in the stock market, causing a temporary but significant dip. Waymo and Tesla's self-driving cars can also be classified as weak AI. Strong AI, on the other hand, describes a hypothetical system that can understand and learn any task that a human being can. It can retrieve knowledge gained from one task and apply it to another to find a solution on its own. Many public figures like Elon Musk, Bill Gates and Stephen Hawking have voiced concerns over strong AI. Let's move on to machine learning, which is a subset of AI. Machine learning was developed in the late 1980s. It empowers computer systems with the ability to learn by providing them statistical tools and algorithms to explore and analyze data. Computers can learn things without being explicitly programmed. They can teach themselves how to interpret large amounts of data and statistics through repetition. There are many different types of machine learning algorithms. Some of them are supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning algorithms provide the computer with both labeled inputs and outputs. This type of algorithm is used to analyze past data, not future data. It is the simplest learning method and is highly accurate. An example of this is filtering out your spam email. You can enter keywords and email addresses that you want to block. Those emails will automatically be sent to your junk folders. Unsupervised learning algorithms learn from the past data provided and use probability equations to predict future data. It is less trustworthy since it involves the computer making predictions. For example, Netflix knows which shows to recommend based on what you have previously watched. Pandora also uses the same unsupervised algorithms. It associates your music preferences with other listeners who have similar musical taste. Banks also use these algorithms to detect fraud. Frog protection, right? Yeah, fraud protection. It finds patterns in your payments and then points out anomalies. The third type are reinforcement learning algorithms where a machine learns to make a sequence of decisions through a trial and error method. The programmer rewards positive behavior and punishes negative behavior. Through this experience, the machine learns the best possible answers to a problem. Reinforcement learning is used in autonomous vehicles like Teslas. There is only so much a vehicle can learn in a controlled environment. When it is out on the road, it learns how to interact with other road users and how to predict future behaviors, such as signaling intent to move by nudging into a lane. Reinforcement learning is also used to teach a computer how to play a game against a human opponent. These three categories of algorithms are not used exclusively. For example, an excavation robot and a bricklaying robot can use a combination of unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. 
WeWork employed machine learning algorithms to assist in forecasting how often meeting rooms would be used. Google uses machine learning at data center facilities to reduce energy used for cooling by 40%. Many big projects like hospitals take years to complete. Algorithms can help plan for future growth in the city and hence the number of patients. Finally, let's discuss deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning. It started in the 2010s, so it's a fairly new sector of AI, but its potential is endless. It has transformed AI and led to exponential growth in just a few years. Deep learning imitates the workings of a human brain in processing data and creating patterns for use in decision making. Deep learning is inspired by human brain cells, which are called neurons. The algorithms imitate the organic and highly complex human neural networks and create structured, artificial neural networks that can learn and make intelligent decisions on their own. It doesn't require data to be entered manually and it can automatically discover features used for classification. It also needs significantly larger amounts of data and consequently high in machines with substantial computing power. It takes longer to train and execute but it can run on its own once it's set up. There are three types of neural networks in machine learning, MLP, CNN, and RNN. MLP, or multi-layer perceptron, is also called ANN, or artificial neural network. The algorithm takes data in a tabular form and processes it in a sequential, one-directional manner. You feed it input, a hidden layer processes the input, and then you receive an output. The second is CNN, or convolutional neural network. These algorithms mainly analyze visual data like images and videos. CNN captures spatial features from an image, like the arrangement of pixels to correctly identify objects in the image. Facebook uses this to automatically tag you in your photos and videos or to suggest tags for your friends. It is also used in medical image analysis to diagnose patients. Cancer researchers at UCLA have built an advanced microscope that trains a deep learning application to accurately identify cancer cells. You can also unlock your phone with face detection through CNN algorithms. Self-driving vehicles also use CNN algorithms to automatically detect objects such as stop signs and traffic lights. It also detects pedestrians, which helps decrease accidents. CNN algorithms are also used to add color to black and white images and video. The third is RNN or recurrent neural network. It is used to analyze text, audio, and time series. It is more advanced than MLP since the algorithm loops through the data to capture all sequential information. It is used for handwriting recognition when you sign paychecks and deposit them digitally. Deep learning is also used in automated hearing and speech translation. It is also used for speech recognition when you unlock computers and phones. Deep learning RNN algorithms are also used for sentiment analysis in the stock market. Finally, customer experience chatbots on websites also use machine learning by analyzing your questions and answers. I hope you found that introduction to AI, machine learning, and deep learning useful. I'm new to this field and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I'll include some links in the description to resources and ebooks that I found pretty useful. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in the subject matter and if I should make more videos on this topic. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.